Hello again, everyone. Mark Busanich of Hudson County View. Thanks again for uh, participating in another installment of Hudson County View live in our cut. Um, I, we have a lot to talk about today. So uh, first things, uh, the first uh, item that we would like to discuss is uh, obviously provide you with an update on the number of uh, COVID cases and deaths and even maybe some of the recoveries that are happening, happening throughout the county. Of course, the big news uh, to talk about, in fact, it's happening right now, actually, this Jersey City Council is holding a special meeting to, dis to determine who will be the next Ward D Council representative to fill the seat that was left vacant, obviously, by the sudden and tragic passing of, uh, of the late Michael Yoon, who passed uh, from COVID-19 complications on uh, Monday, April 6th. Uh, so we'll talk about, um, in fact, I had an opportunity to listen to some of the interviews that Councilman, uh, Councilman uh, Rolando Lavaro and James Solomon conducted on a Monday evening. But of course, as many of you know, uh, Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop and the Council President Joyce Waterman came out in support of, um, it, of, um, of Yous Yosef Soleil. Uh, and he was one of five, one of six candidates that were interviewed by Councilman uh, James Solomon and Rolando Lavaro on Monday. Um, we also want to get to the issue of, uh, well, now on Monday, Jersey City Parks uh, reopened for the first time since the pandemic began back in March. Uh, and we had an opportunity to get to, uh, to Leonard Gordon Park on uh, Tuesday to uh, hear directly from residents uh, to get their reaction to the opening of the park. And in fact, just before, um, uh, just before Jersey City announced that they would reopen the park, Governor Phil Murphy said that he had no intention of opening the state and county parks. Uh, but as of yesterday, he said that uh, the county and state parks will be opening up on uh, Saturday morning. And then of course, we wanna to get to the one, uh, and an important story also is the water main break that happened in Jersey City, a 36-inch main break that occurred uh, the other day that caused uh, even uh, a pipeline or even caused a water main break in Hoboken at 11th Street in Madison. Uh, so we should sure talk, talk about that. And of course, uh, we want to talk about the Hoboken Supervisor, Hoboken Municipal Supervisors Association uh, Union President Dor Lorenzo, who said who said that uh, her members, her 29 members who received layoff notices from the city, she said she feels that the city is treating them like uh, like a bunch of garbage. And so uh, we want to talk a little bit about that. And uh, again, this is in the context of uh, the 79 employees that Hoboken uh, sent or is planning to lay off to, to be able to fill a uh, multi-million dollar budget shortfall in its upcoming budget. So, uh, Thanks for, um, thanks for, again, participating in this recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. We're going to go to commercial break. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same day installation. Consumer carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at consumercarpets.com. Consumer carpets, Jersey City, 201 792 2712. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award winning, life saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. One. Hello everyone again, Mark Blusinch of Hudson County View. Uh, thanks again for participating in this uh, recent installment of Hudson County View live and uncut, uh, coming to you from my apartment in Manhattan, uh, but still reporting on all the news that's important to Hudson County residents. And just want to provide a, um, if you don't mind bearing with the glasses for a moment, just want to provide 
the recent numbers provided by the Department of Health as far as the number of cases and deaths in the county. To date, there are, as of uh, their most recent report of this morning, there are 14,596 uh, cases of COVID-19 in the county. And to date, there are, sadly and unfortunately, 758 uh, deaths. Uh, I could just give you the breakdown of some of the towns here, for example, Jersey City has 5,144 cases. Bayonne has 655 cases. Hoboken has 475 cases. North Bergen has 2,095 cases. Weehawken has 266. Union City has 2,700. Two West New York has 1,095. Kearney, 917, and Harrison, uh, 311. I couldn't get the up-to-date information from Guttenberg and, and East Newark, uh, but those are the recent numbers that we have provided by the uh, Department of Health. And, you know, uh, again, this is, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, the um, the Jersey City Council is, debate, is ha holding a special meeting to fill the seat of the former Ward D Councilman Michael Yoon, who passed from COVID-19 on March on April 6th, well, it was reported yesterday, sadly, that uh, that the council ward, the third ward councilman of Bayonne, uh, Gary Lapalooza's wife, Cherie Lapalooza, uh, tragic, passed away uh, from COVID-19 uh, complications. Um, uh, just read a quote from uh, Bayonne Mayor Jimmy Davis, who expressed his condolences uh, to the uh, third ward councilman. Uh, Bayonne Mayor Jimmy Davis said that um, uh, that I am very saddened to learn that Cherie La Palooza, the wife of Third Ward Council Member Gary La Palooza, passed away after battling the coronavirus. Cherie was a very active and concerned member of our community. So again, um, uh, to date, there have been five Hudson County officials, Hudson County officials that have. Uh, have been either diagnosed or succumbed to uh, the COVID-19 complications. And now this is the wife of uh, Third Ward Councilman of Bayonne, Gary LaPalooza, and we expressed our condolences to him and his family. Um, we wanna just switch gears uh, uh, to the, as we mentioned in the uh, in the opening segment, the uh, water main break that occurred in Jersey City. Now the, the work that was being conducted there, the contractor um, that is, performing the work is out of Howell, New Jersey. Uh, they were driving piles to create a new abutment along Route 7. Now, if many of you have driven th through there recently, uh, the bridge that currently hold that the bridge that you can currently drive over was built back in like 1930. And now the new Witten, um, it's called the Whit Whitpen Bridge, will be is still under construction. It's almost a $500 million uh, project. It's a very complex project. And uh, part of this work that was being done was near Fish House Road, and uh, it caused a massive water uh, water um, water main break. And in fact, the uh, boiler advisories are still in effect for Jersey City. And then it also led to complications over in Hoboken. Now we reported last year we were very busy reporting on all the different main breaks that happened throughout Hoboken, and then of course we reported on. Uh, and then at that point, Suez Water, which is the utility company that's in, that provides uh, water uh, water consumption or main, water maintenance for the whole county or the mun municipalities in the county, uh, the Suez, Suez Water and Hoboken were pointing fingers at each other last year, even leading up to a, a lawsuit brought by the city. But then, of course, that all uh, that all uh, culminated in an agreement between the city and Suez to um, whereby a new utility, this new mechanism would be established so that for the very first time, Hoboken could realize and generate the revenues it receives from water consumption from its residents. It could take those revenues and put it towards all the water maintenance and repairs that need to be done because as many of our uh, viewers know and our readers know, uh, the water systems in, in Hoboken probably date back to like the early 20th century. So. Um, the water main break that happened in Hoboken was at 11th Street and Madison, and again, a water, a boiler advisory is in effect there as well. So uh, thanks for listening in this segment. We're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey, is a fully climate-controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, 
a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, live like you want. Hello again, everyone. Mark Lucent of Hudson County View. Thanks again for this uh, attending this recent installment of Hudson County View live and uncut. We are live once again. Um, another week of, of important news to bring to you, to our viewers. And um, as I mentioned at the uh, outset of our broadcast, uh, what's happening right now, the Jersey City Council is actually holding a special meeting. It started just as we went live um, to determine who will be the next Ward D Council uh, person uh, to fill the seat that was obviously left vacant from the tragic passing of Michael Yoon back on Monday, April 6th, due to COVID-19 complications. And the city council now is holding that special meeting. So it'd be interesting once uh, we uh, go off the air to see um, uh, to see who the council selects. Now on Monday evening, now uh, it was reported, we reported obviously that, you know, councilman that, uh, ca I'm sorry, um, the mayor, Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop and council president um, Joyce Waterman uh, came out and uh, to, uh, came out in support of Yosef Sali. Uh, but there are five other candidates that, that are running. And so that didn't deter Councilman Rolando Lavaro and James Solomon from interviewing all six candidates on Monday evening. And uh, they all, uh, just getting a, sorry folks, uh, just getting a, a message here that the connection may be broken. Just give me, give us a second. Uh, I'll just continue talking unless I uh, hear otherwise. Uh, let me just check the message though. Give me one second. Okay, no worries. We're, we're, no technical difficulties have been uh, resolved. Uh, thanks for uh, bearing with us. But as I mentioned uh, on um, uh, back on Monday night, uh, the council, again, Councilman Rolando Lavaro and Councilman James Solomon interviewed six candidates, including, and those six candidates are Yosef Soleil, Patrick Ambrosio, uh, Jocelyn Patrick, just reading the names here, just give me a moment. Um, also, Cynthia Higianis and Rafael Torres. Now, they each, during their interviews, they were asked a series of several questions by Councilman Lavaro and Councilman Solomon as far as their experience. What do they think their training? Uh, could they talk a little bit about the training they've received up to this point and the experience, their career, multiple career experiences that they may have? How would this all contribute to them being able to build a consensus on the council? And also, what, would, what are their three most important legislative priorities that they would be pursuing? Now, remember, the the city council has to select, uh, has to fill that vacancy because because of a state statute that says that should a vacant should a seat be left vacant due to um, due to the passing of a person of a council person, the city has to fill that seat within 30 days. So um, it so the the count the city has until May 6th to be able to fill the seat. But then of course the they'll all the one of the candidates that's selected today will then have to run if they're so interested will then run again in November during a special election. And then from and then that special election will be good for one year until the Jersey City municipal elections happen in November of 2021. So that's just a chronology of uh, how the the term of the council person who was selected to today uh, will be. Uh, so again, they talked about their 
their three most important legislative priorities. And for some of them, it was obviously affordable housing, rent control. Um, according to Patrick Ambrosio, uh, if I'm just making sure I, I was, uh, and Patrick Ambrosi, I'm sorry for that mispronunci mispronunciation. Patrick Ambrosi, he worked on Michael Yoon's campaign back in 2013. And he said for him, what's really important is making sure that the city budget, which the city's projecting about a $7 million, $70 million budget deficit, uh, that he wants to be able to make sure that the city can cut expenses, but without necessarily leading to any layoffs of city employees. Uh, he's also, uh, Mr. Ambrosi also um, has volunteered with the uh, New Jersey Reservoir Alliance and he at one time was their treasurer. And some of the other, Yosef uh, Soleil, again, who was endorsed by Council President uh, Joyce Waterman and Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop, he talked about too how the budget will be important uh, to the, that the council as a whole will have to make some very tough decisions and will have to get creative in how it addresses the budget to make up for that budget shortfall. But again, he, he emphasized that he doesn't want to see any particular layoffs happen. And then, of course, there was Rafael Torres, who previously ran. He uh, contested Michael Yoon back in 2017, but he came up significantly short. But he emphasized during his interview that he has uh, 27 years of firefighting and a combination of firefighting and firefighter inspection uh, experience as a whole. So, and then of course, uh, Cynthia uh, Hagianis also was uh, Michael Yoon's campaign manager in 2013. And she said that she'd like to re possibly uh, amend or reform the R1 zoning ordinance because she doesn't want to see McMansion-like buildings continue to be built on 25 by 100 foot uh, lots, uh, which she feels takes away from the enchanting qualities of the neighborhood. So uh, we're coming up on another commercial break. Uh, thanks again for uh, watching. We'll be right back with our next segment. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521 9,000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapintil Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Hello again, everyone. Mark Bluesnitch of Hudson County View. Thanks again for being with us in this uh, recent episode of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Um, Governor, Phil Murphy, Governor Phil Murphy uh, was up to now uh, resistant to opening up the state's county and uh and state parks but uh as many of our viewers and readers know um jersey city opened up five parks on monday and they expect a phased in approach where they'll be um opening up the remaining such as lincoln park uh they'll be opening up the remaining parks uh over the next couple of weeks uh this is interesting because north hudson communities such as um well, even South Hudson uh, community, Hoboken, joined by their North Hudson, joined by its North Hudson County peers, uh, West New York, Union City, North Bergen, Guttenberg, and even Union City said they want to take a more regional approach to when they want to open a park. So even though you, Jersey City opened up its parks on Monday and we had a chance to visit one of them on Tuesday, we visited Leonard Gordon Park. Uh, nonetheless, Governor Phil Murphy, who, as I said at the outset, was uh, resistant to opening up the parks. Now, as of yesterday, he said all state and county parks will, res uh, will be open to the public on Saturday morning uh, at, at sunrise. And of course, this is welcome news by uh, Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop, who said, you know, basically that 
people cannot stay indoors despite obviously the uh, challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and all the strict uh, guidelines that are in place to maintain social distancing and so forth. Uh, it's important, it's imperative that people still get to enjoy the fresh air. So we had an opportunity to uh, interview and speak to a couple of residents who are at Leonard Gordon Park. Let's go to that video. Arvin Burab recently arrived in Jersey City from India. He said he's so happy that the parks have now reopened because he's a yoga instructor and he likes to be able to exercise and practice his meditations on an open field. So Arvin, you're glad that the parks reopened? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy because of uh, every day I work, uh, every day I walk here and exercise here. So this is the good weather. I appreciate they are cleaning now. And uh, the people are here at Jersey City uh, Garden. It's a very good garden. So you are obviously in favor of Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop opening the parks. His rationale, his argument saying that people can't remain indoors in, indefinitely and it's good for their physical and mental health. I, so long as we are keeping the communications open to understand that this is a joint process, that we, the community, need to be honoring each other's safety, working for the health, but yes, in the spirit of what I presume the health director and the mayor have been discussing, that it's part of the wellness, the mind, body, and soul, and how we as a community need to lift each other up safely. But this is a trial, so we need to be also very careful to make sure that we are honoring each other's distances and sharing the creative use of the park while not being active. This is uh, like the child behind, in front of me is bicycling safely on the circuit. This park has been a historic place of pleasure. And on a good day in normal times, you can see 20 different kinds of activities going on. So we can be creative and responsible to ensure that we are keeping safe, promoting the wellness of our whole community, and also looking forward to how this park can become improved through the uh, standing master plan process. Okay. Rob, so the mayor opened up, five, this is one of five parks that opened up yesterday. What was your media reaction when you found out that you can now come back into Jersey City's parks? Well, since I live over by the North Side Avenue, uh, actually West Side Avenue, I was hoping they would open up Lincoln Park. Uh, I think this is very small and contained, and I think it limits the amount of people that can really enjoy it, whereas Lincoln Park is huge, and I think more people would be able to access the parks than the smaller ones. They have police over there all the time, so if there was ever an issue, they could definitely take care of things, but uh, I feel more people in Jersey City, especially where I am near uh, St. Peter's College, would have more opportunity to access the parks versus something that's, you know, probably one-tenth the size of Lincoln Park. Mark Boosnitz reporting from Leonard Gordon Park in the Heights section of Jersey City for Hudson County View, the eye of the community. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lindhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away from any mobile device. Whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care, no appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Mark Boosa again of Hudson County View, live in our cut. Thanks again for this. Uh, uh, I'm not anticipating, but attending, participating in a Hudson, another installment of Hudson County View live and uncut. Uh, this is our last segment. This story has to deal with uh, uh, the, soup, the uh, president of the Hoboken 
Municipal Supervisors Association, Dawn, Dawn D. Lorenzo, who's very upset with the city. She, in fact, she blasted the city um, because the city wants to lay off. Now, remember, the city wants to lay off a total of um, 79 employees, uh, 70 employees, I, I believe, total. And but 29 of those are supervisor positions, uh, positions that her union represents. And she blasted the city by saying that uh, she feels that she and her members are being treated like a bunch of garbage. Um, she says now is not the time, especially during this uh, current pandemic, um, with everything that's happening and all the resources that are needed. She said that, for example, these members have years, uh, you know, maybe like 100 years worth of institutional knowledge of city operations and how the city maintains and functions overall and all the expertise expertise that they bring to the table. This is not the time that the city should be uh, sending uh, sending uh, layoff notices or threatening layoff no notices at this point. But uh, in turn, um, Hoboken Mayor uh, Robbie Bala said that, well, you know, we're facing uh, – a multi-million dollar budget shortfall, just like its southern neighbor, Jersey City, is, and we had to cut expenses. And uh, he said that, for example, from March and April this year compared to last year, the city's lost revenue is down by a million dollars in revenue. Uh, but uh, that wasn't enough to uh, to appease uh, Dawn D. Lorenzo. Uh, she feels that. Again, at this point, her members have all this institutional knowledge and that the city should not be at this point, uh, should not be uh, announcing layoff notices. Uh, so uh, so there'll be there'll be an interesting story to follow to see when, when the next council meeting occurs in Hoboken, whether or not she'll be uh, answering questions virtually, because as many of our viewers know, all the council meetings right now are still, even though some guidelines are being lifted, like, for example, the parks are being uh, uh, or being lifted so that people can attend the parks. Well, that doesn't apply to city council meetings. Now, we just want to end with, we hope uh, we, we like the, some of the footage that we were able to gather of. This was on uh, Tuesday. In fact, when I was at the park at Leonard Gordon Park on Tuesday, in recognition or to show support for, uh, for all the COVID-19 first responders and healthcare providers, well, the U.S. Navy uh, flew over their F the Blue Angels, as they're called, F-16 Fighting Falcons and F-18 uh, Hornets flew over New northern New Jersey and into New, uh, New York City over northern over Upper New York Bay and Lower New York Bay, and hopefully you're enjoying the footage there of that military uh, over all that military gear. Um, a lot of that has been a lot of that. Obviously, those fighter jets uh, uh, may be new because of all that. Obviously, the military has received substantial increases in funding from President Donald Trump just in his three years of his presidency. The uh, Pentagon has received something like just a little bit over two trillion dollars in funding. So uh, it looks like uh, the money there is being well spent. Uh, and there and they decided to honor, again, COVID-19 first responders and healthcare providers in New York and New Jersey. In fact, I think right after they flew over New York and New Jersey, they uh, then flew. They then made their journey down to Philadelphia and showed their um, and showed their um, uh, showed to honor healthcare providers and uh, first responders there as well in the city of uh, brotherly love. So uh, again, we want to thank everyone who uh, participated. Thank you, everyone who's attending. Uh, we hope uh, again we'll be reporting soon on the uh, what the council how the council race shakes out in Jersey City. But thanks again for uh, being in attendance for this uh, recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. We'll see you next week.